Are you trying to get the ultimate guitar tone by listening in solo? The most crushing guitar sounds need context. Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the bass and kick to get a huge guitar tone. When you think of your favorite guitar sounds, you're probably not thinking about it in solo. You're hearing it in the context of a song. Context is really important for getting the right guitar sound. In metal, the rhythm guitar needs the bass and the kick in order to have impact and to sound huge. The tools I'm gonna use are pretty simple, just balance and EQ. Let's get started. Let's start with the initial balance. The kick, bass, and guitar need to find a good volume relative to each other. I'm looking for that perfect level where the energy of the guitars mesh with the body of the bass. Then I'm gonna bring in the kick to emphasize those transients. Awesome, let's move on. Once the instruments are well balanced with each other, it's a good time to start carving space in the frequency spectrum. You're gonna wanna play to each instrument's advantage. They all have ranges that sound great and some that don't. Remember that the goal is to create one giant rhythm tone that works together. Rather than look at each track's EQ, let's think about them all as one sound. The lowest frequencies, like 0 to 80 hertz, will be taken by the kick and bass. Let's say in the song that I want the kick to take the lowest frequencies, and the bass will be above that. So the kick will dominate the 50 hertz, and the bass will live around 80 to 120 hertz. 150 to 250 hertz is where the low end of the palm mute hits, so the guitar can take priority there. Guitar is a mid-range instrument, so that 500 to 1500 hertz area is gonna be where it lives. Guitars have a lot of harshness in the upper mids, but that's the presence frequency for the bass. From 3000 to 4500 hertz, the bass takes priority. The bass will roll off from there, and the guitar will take priority again. The guitar's presence frequency is around 5000 to 7000 hertz. Then the rhythm guitars will start to roll off, leaving the kick to fill in the high end. Now, obviously, microphone selection, tuning, shell material, string material, and a ton of other things can change all of these values. This is a basic starting point, but if you approach the rhythm section with this kind of intent, it will be way cleaner and sound huge easily. Honestly, the point of this video isn't to show you the most brutal amp settings, but I am going to drop a few quick pointers here before moving on. The less gain that you can get away with, the clearer the notes and transients are going to become. This helps a guitar sound bigger because of the harmonic interaction of the notes. The second thing to get right is to make sure that the microphones are in phase. Phase cancellation instantly kills frequencies and thins out a guitar tone really fast. The last thing I want to mention is getting great takes and edits. Make sure that the guitars start and stop at the same times and have the right note length. Sure, this stops it from sounding messy and amateur, but it also makes the guitars feel like one. The whole point of double tracking guitars is to add size and width to a recording. And if there's incorrect notes or timings, this is going to break that illusion. What pedal, head, and strings you use will never be as important as getting this kind of stuff right. Anyway, let's move on to automation. Now this is where the real magic happens. The kick, bass, and guitar are dialed in and sounding big, but these settings won't necessarily work for the whole song. To get the biggest possible impact, you have to think about which of these elements is carrying the riff. Sometimes, to make a guitar sound really heavy on a specific section, the kick drum needs to come up. This is great for a bunch of different parts, but really shines on a breakdown. That sounds way punchier. Since the kicks and guitars are playing at the same time, our brains think of it as one rhythmic element. If you've seen our side chaining video, you can use these concepts to help with the balance too. Just remember that you still wanna emphasize the right elements with your side chain. That also might need to be automated as well. If the guitar is playing sustained chords, the bass helps fill out the lower octaves. In standard tuning, a guitar's lowest note has the fundamental pitch of about 82 hertz. The bass can play a full octave below that at around 41 hertz. That means the bass can really fill in the notes that the guitar can't play.
Many mixers high pass their guitars. 100 Hz is a pretty standard place to start with that filter. It's not uncommon to see that filter go up to 150 Hz or even 200 Hz. That means the fundamental pitch for the lowest notes are being cut out. If the guitar is downtuned, that fundamental gets even lower. The high pass does clean up the guitars by removing rumble, but the frequencies need to be represented. That's where the bass comes in. The low end from the bass can live anywhere from 40 to 90 Hz, which is usually an area that isn't present in the guitar track. If the bass and guitar are playing a note or chord together, it sounds way bigger. If the chords are relying on a root note that's outside of the guitar's range, bringing the volume up on the bass track can fill it in. This also means that the guitar can play higher, more interesting chord inversions as long as the bass is consistent. The tone still sounds huge. Check it out. Okay, so those are two examples of when to turn up the kick or bass, but what about guitar? When do we get to boost the thing that we're trying to improve? A good time to increase the guitar volume is when it's doing something that the bass and kick are not doing. If it's playing an accent like scratches or scrapes while the bass and kick are silent, then they need to be louder to have that same fullness. You can also experiment with automating the lower frequencies by using an EQ or multiband compressor. Since the bass isn't there to fill in the low end, the guitar might need a temporary boost in order to sound strong. There's a bunch of ways to go about doing this. You can move all of the parts where the guitar tone is alone to a new track and process it separately. You could take a band of EQ, raise it, and automate the bypass. You could even sidechain the bass and guitar with an expander and then set it so that when the bass is playing, the frequency is flat and when it stops, the frequency is boosted. No matter how you go about it, paying special attention to these sections will keep the guitar sounding full. If the point of a section is to get quieter and add dynamic range, then experiment with the relationship between the EQ and the track volume. If the low end is louder but the track is quieter, it can sound full while still maintaining the artist's vision. Awesome guitar tone isn't only about guitar. Make sure that you don't spend too long dialing in a guitar sound that doesn't work with the bass and drums. You gotta get this stuff into context as quickly as possible so that you can start making better choices on your source tones. If you're mixing already printed stems, remember the power of balance, EQ, and automation. They can get you so far in a mix. And above all, be patient. This is a difficult task that every mixer has to overcome. And once it clicks, your guitars will sit perfectly in a mix and sound crushing. And that's it. What tricks do you use to get the biggest rhythm guitars in your mixes? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.